to our introduction to essential oil chemistry. If you are new here, my name is Elisa and I am a certified essential oil educator as well as a wellness advocate. So why would it be important to learn about the science of essential oils? Well, learning about the science will allow you to better understand why essential oils work and how to use them effectively in your everyday life. Everything I'm sharing today is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. All this information is for educational purposes only. So what will we be covering in today's class? Well, the science of essential oils can be a little complex. And so all we'll be doing is a basic introduction and a general overview. And I hope that this is going to give you a better understanding of how to maximize the benefits of your essential oils in your daily life. And some of the highlights in today's class include the science behind essential oils, the chemistry and the treasure that is behind these oils, what are groups of chemical compounds and individual constituents, and then we'll look at four essential oils a little bit closer, and these are very popular and much loved, the On Guard blend, the Respiratory blend, and then lavender and frankincense. But first, let's review how essential oils are formed. We know they come from nature and they can be found in plants, like their leaves, the stems, the roots, grasses, the resin and trees and flowers. And essential oils are made up of volatile aromatic compounds, which are small organic molecules that tend to change from a liquid state to a gas state at room temperature. And these molecules are so incredibly small that a single drop of essential oil contains approximately 40 million trillion molecules. And the word volatile emphasizes its tendency to evaporate rapidly at room temperature. And this property is what also gives them their very potent smell. So when you open a bottle of essential oil, you will immediately notice the scent and can even probably smell it from a distance. The properties and chemistry of these volatile aromatic compounds allow it to quickly enter into a gaseous state and then moves through the air and interacts with your olfactory sensors in the nose. But each bottle of essential oil is going to contain a unique blend of chemistry. And the chemical structures will mainly be made up of carbon atoms. So let's take, for example, the oil of birch, which is currently only available during special events and not part of our regular inventory. But birch is made up almost completely of a single compound, methyl salicylate. This is what aspirin is made of. But of course, that is going to be a synthetic version. Spikenard, on the other hand, contains hundreds of different compounds. And so most oils are going to fall somewhere between these two extremes. Let's look at a very special oil that we all love, frankincense. Frankincense has 65 different chemical compounds in various amounts. However, there are four principal compounds that make up our beloved frankincense. Pinene, which is very relaxing. Limonene, which is uplifting and cleansing. beta caryophylline which is very soothing. And athugine, which is cell supportive. And that is why the chemistry of oils is so interesting and can really help us determine which is the best oil to use depending on the various things we're trying to address. Now, constituents can produce powerful effects through their interaction with cellular targets. 
Some constituents will bind to receptors that are located on the outside of the cell to influence changes within it, while others can actually pass through the cell membrane and then bind to enzymes and proteins and even DNA. And understanding how our essential oils can influence and have beneficial effects through these chemical interactions can lead to a renewed sense of confidence when we use them and inspire new opportunities for their application in daily life. Universities, hospitals, and research groups have documented over 3,000 studies to discover and demonstrate the efficacy of essential oils and their components. As we have learned, each oil contains hundreds of compounds and a unique and robust chemistry. Each constituent will provide various therapeutic benefits. You can view the studies on these websites, PubMed or Aromatic Science. Additionally, doTERRA has scientific articles on its oils on their website, and I'll share that link with you in just a moment. Now, let's see an example of why the chemistry in essential oils can vary and the different things that influence this. The chemical compounds, for instance, in lavender that grows in your backyard versus lavender that is grown on a farm where they use modified seeds or artificial lights or fertilizers. These are not going to have the same properties that you would find in lavender that comes from Bulgaria or from France where this plant occurs naturally. So ideal conditions are needed for an oil to have truly beneficial properties. Another limitation is the ecological variation, which affects the oil composition. The exact percentage of constituents in an essential oil depends on the geographic location, the time of year it's harvested, and even the time of day the plants are harvested. The minerals in the soil, the seasons, the amount of rain and sun, all of these need to be ideal in order for that plant to have the strongest compounds and chemistry. But there are other factors involved which make doTERRA's oils very special. Not only does the where a plant comes from affect its chemistry, but also the how and the when the raw materials are harvested. In addition, how they're distilled, the pressure used, the timing, all of this will determine if all of the beneficial components of a plant are extracted in the oil, or even if these components were compromised during the distillation process. With doTERRA, we can be assured that these oils are the purest and the most potent. They have a certification called CPTG, or Certified Pure Tested Grade. This means that all of the oils have been extracted from plants, harvested in their natural habitat at the ideal time, and they are distilled or pressed by experts. Over 176 rigorous tests are performed by doTERRA, as well as a neutral, independent third-party laboratory. They can be verified that there are no fillers, no synthetic substances, and no adulteration whatsoever. And you can check the authenticity of your oils by going to source2u.com and entering the lot number on the bottom of any of your individual oils. Now, let's look at the chemistry and structure that makes up essential oils. Let's get started with a oil chemistry wheel. And in a moment, I'll be showing you a full example of this wheel. But first, let's break down the different parts of it. We start off with the center in black. We have to look at the terpene backbone type. This is the structure of the chemical constituents of the oil. And usually the backbone is going to be either a monoterpene or a sesquiterpene. And more on that in just a moment. 
From here, we move on to the yellow portion, which is known as the functional group. And this is what indicates the presence of a specific arrangement of atoms within the constituent molecule that has these distinct chemical properties. From here, we move on to the green section, which is the chemical constituent name. And these are the names of the main compounds that are going to be found in each of the essential oils. And then finally, we're going to see the name of the oil related to all of this chemistry. And this section will give you the doTERRA oils within this backbone, this functional group, and this constituent composition. Now let's look at a real example of a chemistry wheel. This is a sesquiterpene backbone. And here you'll notice that sesquiterpene oils are going to be soothing and stabilizing. When oils are soothing, these are the oils that can help both emotional and physical discomfort. When they're stabilizing, these will be oils that help to ground you, to support the nervous system. They help you feel balanced and stable. At the end of this class, I will share a resource where you can get additional information on the chemistry of doTERRA's essential oils. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. As I mentioned, it starts with the molecular backbone structure, which is the sesquiterpene backbone. From here, we're moving into the functional groups. We'll see that sesquiterpene backbones are going to have sesquiterpenes, esters, ketones, and alcohols. And each of these have their individual chemical constituents. And so that's how we move out into the next layer of this wheel. And then, of course, finally, we have the essential oils and the characteristics of those oils. So let's look at copaiba as an example, which is under the soothing category. If you didn't have copaiba, you'll notice that next to it, we have Melissa. On the other side, we have black pepper. And so if you didn't have copaiba, you could use Melissa as a substitute or black pepper. And these all are going to have similar chemical properties. And it's a really great way to learn how to substitute oils when you're making your recipes. Let's break this down even further, okay? In addition to the two main molecular backbones, which are the monoterpenes and the sesquiterpenes, we noticed that there were functional groups in the next layer. There are approximately eight or nine groups that are found in essential oils, although only one of them is produced during the distillation process, which is number three. And each group is going to have, as I mentioned, those individual constituents, which we'll be looking at in just a moment. For today's class, we'll only be looking at three of these functional groups. We will look at the monoterpene hydrocarbons, the sesquiterpene hydrocarbons, and the aldehydes. Essential oils contain these groups of chemical compounds, and the first functional group we're going to look at is the monoterpenes. These are going to have therapeutic properties that include antioxidants, they're detoxifying, anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, sedative, insecticidal, anti-tumor, restorative, cognitive health, cell protective, and mood enhancing. Now let's look at the individual constituents that are going to be found under the monoterpene category. You have limonene, pinene, terpenene, cymene, and myrcene. We can look at the chart and notice how grapefruit is approximately 97% limonene. Wild orange is about 95%. Lemon also has pinene, and this is a 95%. Lime has limonene and terpenene, and that's 85%.
And you'll notice how there's other oils with various amounts of these different individual constituents. And you have options. If you don't have grapefruit and you're looking for an oil that's high in limonene, well, then you also can start choosing wild orange, for instance, or lemon or lime. You'll notice that these are all citrus oils and all the citruses are going to be high in lemony. Let's look at our second category, and this is the sesquiterpene hydrocarbons. And the therapeutic properties here are going to be anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, analgesic, digestive stimulant, vasodilator, endocrine support, and sedation. Now let's look at the second category. And here we have the sesquiterpene hydrocarbons and the individual constituents that make up this category. You'll notice that you have cedarwood and patchouli, vetiver, ginger, ylang ylang, and myrrh. All of these oils are the highest in these individual constituents. And so if you're looking for properties that are anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, analgesic, etc., you know to look for oils under this category. Let's look at our last functional group, which is the aldehydes. And the therapeutic properties for aldehydes include sedatives, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, analgesic, nervous system, hypotensive, which means it can support lowering blood pressure. Individual oils in this category are going to be cassia, lemongrass, cinnamon, and cilantro. And some of the common aldehydes are going to be cinnamaldehyde, geranial, and neural. And it's wonderful to know that our oils have the chemistry we need to support so many of our challenges. Now that we have an idea of the different compounds found in essential oils, we're going to take a deeper dive and a closer look at four popular oils. We're going to look at two blends and then two single oils. Let's start off with On Guard. Why does it work? Well, On Guard has rosemary, and rosemary has a property called P cymine, and this is an antibacterial that helps fight germs. On Guard also contains cinnamon, and the individual constituent we just learned about is cinnamaldehyde, and this is a powerful antioxidant and excellent for boosting our immune system. On Guard also contains clove. Clove is the most potent antioxidant on the planet. And clove is going to have a constituent of eugenol. And this is a very important immune stimulant. It really helps recharge your immune system when it's already in a state of combat because it's under threat. And it also has very potent effects as a preventative measure. Limonene, which is found from the wild orange in On Guard, destroys or inhibits the growth of parasites. It benefits the nerves. It stimulates digestion, kills and prevents the growth of bacteria, inhibits the development of cancer cells and anti-infection properties. And finally, we have geranial, which comes from eucalyptus, an antiviral that helps prevent the replication of viral RNA. And RNA stands for ribonucleic acid, a nucleic acid which is present in all living cells. And its main role is to act as a messenger carrying instructions from DNA to control the protein synthesis in your body. Let's look at another oil and what is behind the oil of breathe. Well, breathe contains eucalyptus and eucalyptus has a constituent called 1,8-cineol. And this is a very powerful cough suppressant. Our new breathe contains the new eucalyptus blend, 
which is comprised of five different species of eucalyptus. So if you've noticed a different scent in your breathe, it's coming from the new blend of eucalyptus that they've added. Breathe also contains rosemary, and the main constituent that supports us there is camphor. And this can help reduce inflammation, irritation in the lungs, throat, and chest. It contains peppermint, which is very high in menthol. And menthol can open up those airways, help promote clear breathing, and can also help with coughing. Breathe also has tea tree, and we have that 1-8 cineol again. And some of the other properties are that it opens up your airways and can also help with respiratory spasms. Now, I wanted to share a quick DIY recipe with you. Sometimes breathe is not enough if we have a chronic cough or we're really struggling with our upper respiratory section. We could combine breathe with On Guard and black pepper to boost its properties. And so you can combine two drops of each of these with some fractionated coconut oil and then apply it to the chest and lungs for any type of uh, infection or chronic cough. And you want to do this three to five times a day. The easiest thing to do, in my opinion, is to make a roll on or a roller ball. And right here, I've broken down the suggested drops depending on the age. So seven to 10 drops of each of these oils for adults, three drops of each for children, and then one drop of each for babies. And this is for a 10 milliliter roller bottle. You would fill the rest with fractionated coconut oil. Something interesting in this blend is the properties found in black pepper. One of them is beta caryophylline, and this can help regenerate tissue, reduces the sensation of pain and inflammation, can help reduce the free radical damage by supporting antioxidants in the body, plus it's also an antispasmatic. Let's move on to our last two oils that we'll be highlighting in the class. Let's look at the chemistry behind lavender. Linal acetate is one of the main properties found in lavender, which helps reduce spasms, it revitalizes the cardiovascular system, and it stimulates the digestive system. We also have linalool, and studies have shown that it promotes the restoration of different body systems and can be very supportive for sleep. The coumarins in lavender have shown very positive effects on skin conditions, such as dermatitis or rashes, or even when you burn yourself. If you apply a little bit of lavender, it removes the sting and it helps the skin heal faster. And then lavender also has beta caryophylline. It helps regenerate those tissues, as I mentioned earlier, helps with pain and helps with antioxidant properties. Finally, let's look at our king of oils, frankincense. Frankincense is made up of apinine, and the different constituents of this chemical means that it has properties as an analgesic, as an anti-tumor, as an expectorant, and as an anti-arthritic. And that's what makes frankincense such a wonderful oil because it has that versatility that can support you with so many different challenges. Frankincense also has beta caryophylline. And we've noticed that in the black pepper, we noticed it in the lavender, and now we have it again in this oil. Then we have the next chemical constituent, a thugene, and this is an anticonvulsant. And frankincense is well known for being an oil that can support with seizures. And then finally, limonene. This is an antibacterial, inhibits the growth of cancer cells, reduces seizures. Also, it's anti-infection, anti-parasitic, and supports with neurological function. And so, of course, frankincense has, as we learned, about 65 different constituents but these are the top constituents that are found in frankincense.
I wanted to share a couple of DIY recipes with you. We have halt virus, and this is where you would take the frankincense, oregano, and on guard in a vegetable capsule twice a day to combat an active infection or to boost your immune system. But you do want to be careful not to take it more than 10 days in a row. And that's because of the oregano. Oregano has thymol, and that can be really hard on your liver if you take it for extended periods of time. So take it no more than 10 days in a row, and then give yourself a break of about two weeks. And then if you needed to, you could resume taking it. Then we have Emotion Potion. This is a great blend to apply when you have fear, when you need to uplift your mood, maybe you have a lot of sadness or you have feelings of anxiousness. The frankincense, black spruce, mandarin smell wonderful together. And so you would make this roller ball, fill the rest with fractionated coconut oil, and then you can apply it to your pulse points, bottom of the feet and along the spine. Now, be careful with the green mandarin because this is a citrus. And remember, citrus oils are phototoxic and they can cause a sunburn if you expose yourself to the sun anywhere where you've applied a blend or an individual citrus essential oil. So for this one, apply it where you won't be exposed to the sun or apply it at night. But definitely make sure that you leave 12 hours or more before applying it topically and going out into the sun. Now, most of the information in this class was taken from four different resources. The book Advanced Oil Magic, which also gives you different protocols and recipes and explains the various oils. And the back of the book will have an entire section on the science of essential oils. Plus, Essential Oils Unlocked is also an excellent book to have if you're into chemistry of essential oils. Plus, we have the doTERRA Essential Oil Chemistry Handbook that was uh, edited and developed in part by Dr. David Hill, who's one of the founding executives of doTERRA. If you are interested in learning more about this topic, I'm going to put a link in the description below so that you can download the free doTERRA chemistry handbook. I hope that this brief introduction has helped you understand a little bit about how the chemistry of oils work and how they can be wonderful in supporting our physical and emotional health. Now, if you are new to essential oils and you are interested in learning more, I will be sharing my contact information in the description below. Plus, I'll be adding a link to a brief questionnaire so that I can connect with you and support your individual needs. If you're already a member, I encourage you to get in touch with your wellness advocate. If you have any questions or need any type of support or want to develop a protocol for something specific, we are always eager to help and support you on your wellness journey. Now, I wanted to share a couple of the classes that are coming up the rest of the month. We have one on the 18th, and that's going to be top tips for making roller balls. And so I'll have a variety of recipes so that you can easily, at your fingertips, create these recipes to support so many different challenges. And then we have essential oils A to Z. We'll be focusing on marjoram and melissa, and that will be held on the 25th of the month. The following classes are going to be using the same Zoom and the same password. So I really hope you will mark your calendars and join me for that. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to join me today. I hope that you found value in today's class, and if so, please give it a thumbs up. This will help my channel be discovered by others that are also looking for natural wellness solutions and essential oil education. I also invite you to subscribe if you haven't already done so, and click the notification bell, and that way you won't miss out on any of my future content. I am wishing you peace, health, and serenity. 
until next time. Bye-bye.